Hey, welcome back everybody. Sign here again with another episode of my Blood Magic tutorial. And uh, what we're going to be focusing on mainly today is rituals, like this wonderful beastie set up here. And by extension, uh, how to make like the bound blades so you can get the large bloodstone bricks to uh, make a tier 4 altar. Alright, so the main things we're going to need. I have some in my inventory here. Ritual stones, right? You can do rituals manually or you can use the ritual uh, the ritual diviner but the main thing we're going to need to start off with is some of these ritual stones now to make them just reinforce slates which is from your tier 2 altar which is pretty handy you can start making rituals as soon as you make it a, a tier 2 altar and it's reinforced slate obsidian and at least a tier 2 orb the apprentice blood orb right master magicians is a tier 3 Apprentice is tier 2, it's an emerald and 5,000 LP in your blood altar, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't think I showed off how to uh, make a blood altar or a uh, an orb last episode. So easy enough to make like a tier 1 is simply a diamond. And you just simply right click this thing in your blood altar like so and wait. Red particles means it's working. If it ever turns to white particles, it means you don't have enough LP in your altar. So, and while we're doing that, actually, might not be a bad idea to say, we get some runes of augmented capacity, and I don't need the builder's wand there. And I want, uh, what are they called? Superior capacity, right? All right, you can see it's still working along. It's kind of slow unless you add speed runes to it. Which, uh, what is it? Blood rune, uh, uh, here we go, speed runes, right? And that is two tier one slabs and two sugar, as well as a regular blood rune, your basic rune, which is two tier one slabs, six smooth stone, and an orb, right? And boom, you can see here that we've made our first tier blood orb. Blood orb. And I'm just going to put that there for now. And you can only get things manually out of the altar with an empty hand. Um, I remember catching Way of Time once say why, and I can't remember the exact reason. I think it was basically to prevent things from bugging and glitching out. So, but this little guy, whenever you make an orb, first thing you want to do is look anywhere but your altar and just right click it once. And what that will do is you can see now it says current owner, elder sign. That's basically what you want to do. You want to bind it to yourself so it stores the LP in your personal network. Until you bind it to yourself, this thing holds zero LP. You can't put anything into it. So, But go ahead and get rid of that thing. We don't need it anymore. And so now, like I say, you got your tier two. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mention this while I'm thinking about it. Tier two uh, blood runes, these eight right here, they act a little bit differently than the rest of the, the rest of the runes you can make all eight of these special runes however only the ones on the center of each side will do anything the corners for whatever reason you might as well just leave basic blood runes they don't have an effect whenever you change those out but i just put down four runes of augmented capacity now our basic altar which actually um let's see let's go back to here to get a regular blood rune. So we break that. It's going to make it a tier 1 altar, right? Tier 1 altar, however, says capacity 18,000 LP. These runes are still working even though this is not a valid altar. And let's see. It started raining on me. But our race, you know, our basic altar is only holds 10,000. Each one of these augmented capacity runes, which are fairly simple to make, it is a tier 3 slate. Three empty buckets, four smooth stone, and a blood orb. And uh, each one of those will add 2,000 LP. Now, after a certain point, you're going to want to use superior uh, capacity. The thing with superior capacity is they work on a percentage-based system, not on a flat number. So I believe it's up till it's either 8 or 10 of these augmented capacity runes. The basic ones are better. After that, you're going to want to switch to the uh, superior capacity, which eh, a little more spendy. A demonic slate, which is, you know, your tier four slate and takes 15,000 LP per go. 
two empty buckets and four obsidian plus an orb which it cycles through the different blood orbs here but the lowest tier one that this one will take is the master blood orb which is a tier four blood orb takes weak blood shards which we need this guy here the bound blade to get <clears throat> i'm sorry i'm just getting over a bit of a, a cold and whatnot so what i'm going to do is pop some of these out and put in some capacity runes all right and let's see let's go like say here so that is 10, 14 augmented capacities and five superior capacities. And we take our divination sigil, which probably should be the first thing you make. Regular blank slate, seven glass, and any blood orb will make this thing. Peer into the soul to get the current essence. If you're looking at anywhere but a blood altar and right click it, it will tell you how much LP, life points, are in your personal network. Basically what's stored inside of your blood orb, right? And you can see every time I have the orb of testing, the creative mode orb, every time I right click it, it gives me 100,000 LP. If you're looking at your blood orb, by the way, or your blood altar and right click, it'll tell you your altar's current essence, which right now is zero. Current tier is tier four and capacity is currently 44,105 LP. Now, remember what I said about these guys being based off of percentages? So we're at 44,000 right now. Uh, let's go ahead and replace that one. And now we're 45,000. See, currently it's actually, maybe it's 20 of these guys, I think, where it becomes better. But currently, every time I replace one, it's actually slightly worse than uh, the augmented capacity runes. So let's put a few more of those guys down and put like, say, three more of those. Now we should have a huge jump. Yep, 59,000. Just on the uh, the regular capacity runes, though, I should have only have seen an 8,000 jump. And according to chat here, we went up 14,000 by doing that. So I believe the threshold is 20. And then you want to switch over to the superior capacity runes. These guys down here, these will be important for the most potent rituals. These are runes of the orb. And they require three blood orbs, two demonic slates, and four stone. What these do is they increase the amount of LP that your orbs can hold. So that's actually pretty important. A lot of the rituals, um, like the, uh, oh, I can get rid of that too. Uh, the ritual that lets you get to a tier six requires 1 million LP. The problem is the tier five blood orb only holds 200,000 LP. And unless you can figure out how to get a million LP all at once into your orb that can't hold it, you cannot activate the ritual. But let's see, back to ritual stones now. So ritual stones are actually pretty cheap. Four rain flare slates, four obsidian, and it makes four ritual stones. Now your master ritual stone, you're gonna need one of these per ritual. This takes four ritual stones and four obsidian and an orb. Also pretty cheap. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but it is a little bit time consuming without, say, speed runes. You know, into this guy here. But let's see. Now, one of the main things you're going to want is, uh, let's bring up, here we go, is the Ritual Diviner. Right, this guy right here. You can see that there's three of them. Uh, ritual Diviner used to explore new types of rituals. Cannot place Dusk Runes. The second tier can place Dusk Runes. The last tier can place Dawn and Dusk Runes. Uh, those are only used for the, the higher tier rituals. Uh, to get started on some of the basic rituals, regular Diviner is fine. And to make it, you need one emerald, four diamonds, and then you need four of these elemental inscription tools. And you should note, this recipe is not shapeless. So if you're trying to make it, you have everything, make sure you double check the order that these guys are in here. Uh, clockwise, it's air, fire, earth, and water. Now to make these things, requires a tier three altar, right? So the glowstone tier here, right? We're looking at 28 runes. 
You don't need to have any special runes to actually get this far. And they might help, but you can get that far with regular blood runes. But let's see. I'll look for speed again here. Oh, actually, I have the tier 2 on me. But, and that's actually fairly cheap, but you need a gas tier and a thousand LP to make your air inscription. A magma cream and a thousand LP for the, the uh, fire. Obsidian and a thousand for earth. And then a block of lapis. That's probably the most expensive one out of here. And a thousand LP for your water. All right, so you put that together and you get yourself one of these guys, which I'm going to currently use. Now the ritual diviner, to use this thing, you can place down master ritual stone, boom, like so. And then you can see on here, press shift for extended information. Notice how it currently says current owner blank ritual ID blank. So what you want to do is you want to shift click once, or shift right click, I'm sorry. And it will now like say ritual of the full spring. And every time you shift right click, it will cycle through to a different ritual, like say serenade in the nether, right? And you mouse over your Master Ritual Stone now, it'll show you the layout of the runes you need. And this wonderful thing will actually change the basic Ritual Stones in your inventory into the corresponding rune that you need. So, one, two, three, four. And then now if you, certain rituals have a different direction they go, that they face. And you can use the Diviner to say which way it faces. Uh, this one here, Serenade in the Nether, it's pretty much one of your most basic rituals. You can see here, four ritual stones and a master stone. And it faces straight up. That's all it does. But what this guy does, whoop, is it makes lava. At the cost of LP, right? So let's get ourselves a block of iron. And you can see here, it makes lava without a block update. So until you do something to this guy, it won't flow. Now it's two flows. Now I made it update. So, And you can see it's got little particles coming off of it. It's still active, so even if, like, say, uh, let's get a bucket. Bucket in creative mode, it just deletes whatever you're pointing at. So, whoop, pick up the source block, and it will keep making it at the cost. I think it's, like, only 50 LP per go. It's actually really cheap. There we go. Just update it again. Yep, oh, there we go. So now I believe, uh, I'm trying to remember how to, oh, that's right, they're, um, redstone sensitive so I'm just gonna put rich stone on top of there we're gonna wait for that to dissipate a bit and you can actually use a redstone signal underneath this guy to turn it on or off at will pretty handy if you want to use LP to generate lava for whatever reason this is your ticket Here we go pop that off it oh no wait a second was it a redstone signal or oh. there we go did that turn it off this time probably not it's still sparkling nope still is hmm these used to be redstone controlled what happened there is another way to turn that off right Oh, it's probably because it's a creative activation. Uh, yep, I'm getting myself into trouble again here. So, weak activation crystal, here we go. Right click to attune it to myself. And, come on, let me out of here now, thank you. Really, it's gonna start raining again. No, go away. Russia energy flows through the ritual. That is what pops up in chat when you turn it on. There is a way to shut this thing off. Usually the easiest way, though, is just break the master ritual stone. And you can see there, she's gone now. But let's see. What's another ritual you can do right after that? Green Grove interdiction ritual. Uh, the Green Grove will uh, basically, you set it up next to your farm and it will make all the plants in your farm go just go nuts at of course the cost of a uh, LP ritual of containment is to capture demons ritual of binding this is the most important one to get to a tier 4 that is what will let you make 
a bound blade, as well as the other bound tools. There's actually a few of them, right? Oh, you got your blade, you got your pick, bound axe, and bound shovel. You can also make bound armor, which is actually really good armor. Uh, like say in Hoarder's Delight 2, it's not going to compete with the red matter or gem armor, but it does make you pretty damn invincible and there are augments you can add to it. Uh, it makes you invincible at the cost of LP. Do keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. So we're going to want a Master Ritual Stone. And if you shift or hold shift over the top of the uh, Ritual Diviner here, it will tell you what stones and what type of stones you need to do the ritual. In this case, you can see it says eight blank stones, four air, four water, four fire, and four earth for a total of 24 stones. Now, the nice thing is this thing, like I said, will automatically mark the ritual stones to how they need to be. You can see there that, oops, top of the screen there, that's earth. Dark blue is water. Light blue is air. Red is fire. So now we just look at this guy. And as long as we have the ritual stones in our inventory, 24, they can be blank ones. Just hold right click and boom, she's done. Now to make a bound blade, we're going to need a diamond sword, right? And a little bit of luck. The luck comes in in a second here, but you throw your diamond sword on top of that. And then you just right click with your activation crystal. The luck comes in. Okay, good. You see this circle showing up? Okay, that's loud. And let's just uh, turn that off. Oh, that didn't have any effect. That circle means the ritual worked like it was supposed to. Very rarely, the lightning bolt will come down and destroy the diamond sword before the ritual gets started. So now we have a bound blade. However you see in my hand, it looks like basically a blood orb, right? You can see here, deactivated, no mention of who it belongs to. Shift right click. And it turns from the orb into a sword. And after you do that, it will tell you who it belongs to. Now, when this guy is active as a sword, it does not draw LP. However, doing damage will. And this is one of the nastier side effects of blood magic. If you do not have the LP in your network to fuel the sword, you can see here the tooltip says may cause a bad day. It will outright kill you if you don't have the LP. And let's see, we go here to this horse. Now you see how he's got particles after I hit him? There's a chance, well, it only works with hostiles. But when you kill them after, with the particles in effect like that, they can drop blood shards. So... Let's uh, go to normal mode. And let's get ourselves a few creepers here to practice on, right? Got the chicken. All right. Particles, kill. There we go, first shot. We have ourselves weak blood shard. And now back to peaceful because otherwise I'm gonna have slimes running all over the place. The downside of super flat. But weak blood shards. Uh, let's see. Uses? There we go. You can use them to make empty sockets, which is pretty damn nice. Use the sockets in part with these to, uh, to make yourself some pretty nice armor, actually. Um, I'll get into that maybe later. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Arcane pedestals used for fighting demons. Uh, armor inhibitor. Uses to suppress a soul's unnatural abilities. Which works, again, with the bound armor. You can use it to kind of control better what you're doing. And the key of binding. Binds other items to the owner's network. Uh, what this will let you do is, like, say somebody else made you something with blood magic. This will help you rebind it to your network. So that you can use it and it'll burn your LP instead of their LP. Because it'll burn the owner's LP no matter who the current person using the item is. So if you're doing multiplayer, careful about that. And now shapeless crafting. One weak blood shard, one smooth stone gives you 32 large bloodstone bricks. Which you can turn into 
Bloodstone bricks. Um, that's about it, actually. I forgot. There's not a small one in this version. Um, but to cap off your blood altar, you need the large bloodstone bricks. You goof up, turn them all in, you can chisel them back into regular. So that is an option. Uh, you can also use it to teleposition focus, which are kind of fun, actually. Uh, it'll let you swap two blocks within the world. Not entities, but the actual block. And then you can also use it to make ender shards, which are used to make routing focuses, which we will need later. Default output routing focus. And so on and so forth. You know, and these are basically kind of filters for the routing. Um, to do the ritual for these guys here, crystal clusters. Yeah, we're going to need... Uh, it's very somewhat complex operation. But now we have, boom, large blood, or we have the capability to make large bloodstone bricks. And one other thing you can do is you only really ever need one of these things because there is a recipe. I think it's, uh, da, 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 da. is it orb crafting? It's, this is used for quite a few things. Ah, oh, here we go. Shapeless orb crafting, weak blood shard, orb, and an imbued slate, the tier three slate, will give you five more weak blood shards. So like I said, you only really need one. As long as you're careful with your first one and don't use it up right away, you can just keep making more. Especially if you're doing like a hoarding quest that needs a lot of these, you know, oh, I don't know, like sockets. It might be easier to set up auto crafting than it would be to uh, kill a lot of things with your bound blade. Especially since, like, say you go to Autonomous Activator it, you run out of LP by accident, all of a sudden you're just randomly dying and you don't know why. It can cause a very bad day. But that's a couple of our basic rituals. Uh, this guy here is a little more complex. Uh, this is the, uh, oh, bugger, I can't remember what it's called. Well of Suffering. Unbinding, uh, Ritual the High Jump. Magnetism, Crusher, Speed, Shepherd, the Well of Suffering. Now, this guy, I'm going to build him up in the air again. This guy, when activated, which requires 50,000 LP in your network, by the way, so do remember that. Each ritual has a different LP cost, but uh, I don't know. Does this tell you? This does not actually tell you the cost of the L or the uh, cost of the ritual. Just the runes it needs. But the Well of Suffering, it requires dusk stones. So you're going to have to upgrade your ritual diviner to the tier 2, right? So let's get you out of here. Let's get our tier two and cycle back over to our correct uh, ritual almost there there are a lot of rituals I wish there was an easier way to cycle through but that's kind of about it well of suffering so but to get our upgraded one you're gonna need to add in two elemental inscription tool dusks and Two demonic slates, which are the tier four slates. So that's a little on the spendier side. So you can't really automate LP gathering until you hit tier four. But these guys, pretty easy. It requires tier four altar. It's a block of coal, 2000 LP. Done. I mean, those are the easy ones. And then you got your demonic slates, ritual diviner. Boom. Gives you ritual diviner that can place dusk runes now. So the well of suffering, though. Causes damage to an, uh, all hostile mobs. I believe it's within 16 blocks. And every time it damages a mob, it will put LP into your altar. At the same time, every time it runs a cycle of damage, it will drain LP from your network. These can make pretty handy uh, mob drop farms, though. Just for the simple fact of you leave your blood orb in the altar and it'll get refilled faster than, well, depending on the amount of mobs, but usually faster 
then it's drained out. What happens is, is it takes 100 LP for every cycle, right? And it happens about, I think it's once every second, three quarter second to a second. So about every 20 game ticks. However, every time a mob is damaged by it, you gain 50 LP. So you only need two mobs within reach, and it will affect uh, passive as well as hostile. But you only need two mobs to break even. And three or more, and you just start generating a lot of LP, which you can then, like, say, pump out of your altar and into storage or whatever. If you're going to pump LP out of your altar, though, you're going to want, I believe it is... Um, oh, what was it called again? Acceleration. Dislocation runes. Rune of dislocation, right? Which is three full buckets and a tier three slate. So it's very similar to the augmented capacity, but these actually need to be full of water. But these things here will let you move LP in and out of your altar at a much faster rate. Uh, default, I believe, is 20 millibuckets per second, or no, maybe it's per tick, but it's not very fast, and that applies to both moving it in and out of your altar. So no matter how much LP, liquid LP, you're shoving into it, it will still only accept 20 per tick. And these guys, though, they will uh, let you move it a whole lot quicker in and out. So let's say I'm going to do like that. There. That should give us a yeah, pretty decent rate of speed. And grab this guy out of there. He sucked up all the blood that was in there. Um, let's get a uh, creative tank. Create a portable tank. I don't need you or you anymore. Let's get ourselves... Is it just called blood? I think... Uh, no, that's the bucket of blood it's from Tinkers. So, how about just life? All right, come on, max space more. And life, here we go. Bucket of life. So, say we take, we put this guy on top by shift clicking. Man, we'll make him, boom, there we go. Bucket of life essence. Now, I'm going to need a wrench of some flavor. Uh, where? Here we go. Subscribe the Crescent Hammer, the wrench for these tanks. Right click on there and it should start dumping in, and it is. And you see it's actually moving at a pretty good rate, but now I've also put a lot of those, you know, these wonderful runes of dislocation around there. There we go, and our tier, our, our altar is currently maxed out. So you can, like say, if you're making more than you need, you can actually shuttle LP off into drums, say, or, you know, tanks. Tanks are not very efficient for the size in your world they take up. But drums, uh, like into an AE system, so on and so forth. And you can store it for later, pump it back in if you need it. Or you could, like say, have one major altar here. That all it does is it has, like, say, runes of dislocation around it, uh, runes of sacrifice, so you actually get more LP for every tick with the uh, your well of suffering. And you can then pump it off into other altars and have them do the crafting. Do remember, though, a lot of the higher tier crafting uh, takes more LP per tick than these than a uh, altar could normally take without these runes of dislocation. So you're gonna need some of these on each end of the uh, the pipe, so to speak. But I hope that answered a few of uh, people's questions. And you should be at least able to get to a tier four and then five, because I should hope that you know how to make beacons. It's usually pretty easy. Uh, the fun one, however, is going to be the tier six altar. This, it's going to require Oh, uh, let's see. First of all, uh, let's go back to the actual ritual here. Eternal soil, ellipsoid, evaporation, synchronicity, evil, sage's stomach, convocation of the damned. 
All right, we're going to need a total of 128 rune stones, or not, or ritual stones, sorry. And it also requires dusk stones. So, boom. This guy is big, right? There we go. Finally done. All right, well, here's a good start, right? You'll notice that this thing is roughly the size of your completed blood altar. Word of advice. Oh. Rain, go away. Do not set this up close to your base. It will not end well for you. This thing works once you have everything completed for it, which it requires a few different things like uh, that I haven't covered yet, but like bell jars, it requires uh, liquefied essence, it requires a ton of LP, and so on and so forth. What this does, though, if you've met all the requirements, is it will uh, it'll spawn in a demon village. And it usually doesn't care too terribly much what's around it whenever it starts coming in. So I would recommend, like, say, not in... Oh, what is it? Aroma 97's or Aroma 1997's Dimensional World, I would not recommend that. Uh, hostiles don't like to spawn in that dimension. I would build a platform a good distance away from your base and make it a good size one. Um, I don't know, six chunks by six chunks maybe should do it. Place a sucker in the middle and once everything's set up, let her rip. But I'm going to cover this ritual by itself in the next video so if you have any more questions just leave them below in the comments and until next time sign signing out have fun